I study fungi and fungi that interact with plants. And they don't all make big fruity bodies that you can see. And the examples I'm going to show today are fungi that are plant root associates. And I'm going to talk to you about how we use short life lived radioisotope tracers for studying plant biology. My first point is it takes a group of people with different ex background and expertise. Nuclear physicists, radiochemists, um, um, plant physiologists, ecologists, uh, uh, folks that make, make the uh, instruments. And so Jeff Weisenbaker from Jefferson Labs worked with us. And then folks at Duke University, we have a cyclotron that's producing many of the elements that I'm going to be talking about. Okay, so that's the first point. Second point, so this is a report that uh, uh, Andrew Weisenbaker uh, made this slide. These are the different short-lived radioisotopes uh, that we can use. Today, I'm only talking about two, but there's a lot of opportunities. And in plant biology, we're not as funded as well as human uh, biology, but, so we piggyback on a lot of the technologies. We've used technetium, for example, to bind to a lectin that binds to chitin, so we can look at fungi in the soil. That's using spec imagery. Today I'm going to be talking about the positron emitters. Okay, so there's a lot of opportunities. That's my talking point for slide two. Okay, slide three. This is how we label. So at Duke University, there was a lot of foresight in how we had this, uh, these instruments uh, made. So this is a DOD facility, and when we produce the C11, because it has a short half-life, as shown on the other slide, it's 20-something minutes. So when they produce it, we have to sign up for beam time, we have to have all our plants and fungi growing and ready to label, and then it's piped up through the cyclotron into our growth chamber, where we have a cuvette where the C11 comes out at one part per million, so very small concentrations, and the cuvette is shown here. And inside the cuvette, we have air temperature control. We have little fans for equal mixing. And the leaf is clamped in there at its natural position, so we're not hurting the leaf. And then we have lights. Photosynthesis happens. The C11 goes in, gets turned into sugars. We study how it gets loaded into the flow, how it gets transported from the leaf into the shoot and down. It takes a long time. We're interested in roots, so I'm going to talk about roots, but there's a lot of uh, parts here. We have coincidence counters, because when the positronium uh, annihilates, it sends out particles. And so we are able to count the amount that gets loaded and transported down. Okay, so that's good, good foresight. Okay, so here's the roots. Here's our detectors. We have mobile detectors that we can move around depending on what area of the plant we're interested in. I'm showing only half of it because uh, they, they annihilate about 180 degrees. There's actually detectors on both sides. So we have the root system, we can see it. We've got detectors, we can move them around depending on where we want to image. So I'm showing you the plants, the leaves. We're looking at corn here. So this is what the whole plant looks like. The rest of the presentation, you're only going to see the roots. Okay, so the talking point here is it takes facilities and foresight in making those. We have a great uh, FRIB center for doing studies on plant biology. We're going to be leaders of nuclear physics and plant biology. It's good to have hot labs built into the center so that we can label uh, our plants or fungi or microbes and use them in that way rather than try to move isotopes all around campus. Here's an example of uh, how we're labeling C11. You can see the side that's inoculated gets more. So my uh, carbon, so my talking point here is um, you can get uh, rate and quantity really well uh, using, using these isotopes. So clear media is really nice to visualize, but it's not very realistic. <laughs> so here we have, the movie's not playing, we have soil mix that's opaque, but the isotopes, types, isotopes go through. And we can see that the inoculated side gets, uh, we can quantify how much carbon, it's over 100% more carbon, and it happens faster. So we can get rates and quantities on this. And if you uh, put one more, this should spin around, you can get 3D <laughs> images of the roots in an opaque media. This is very useful to soil and plant biology. Okay, so here's an example with N13. And from here we're labeling N13. And we notice that the side with the fungus actually gets 
uh, more nitrogen goes from this side into the plant. And so that's how the symbiosis between plants and fungi are thought to work, that it's bi-directional. So with these isotopes, we can label multiple things and simultaneously here, we're doing it one at a time, but we can label them both. And because the half-life's so short, you can do multiple experiments in one day, or you can do them different isotopes on the same plant. And so there's a lot of opportunities uh, from that. So those those are my uh, those are my talking points. Thank you very Great. much. <laughs> So any questions? So yes, this, this sink effect is microbially stimulated. Is that what you're trying to tell us? The more microbes or that, the symbionts you have, the greater the sink for the movement? Uh, yes and no. It's not about the most, it's about the, the actual organism. So with the Attractiella, that's a new species we describe. It's on populace, it's dominated. We see it gets more carbon, but it doesn't get it faster, per se, than the uninoculated. We do these in multiple replicates. The leptodontidium, that's common endophyte on blueberries and other things, okay? But they're understudied. These things get a lot of carbon and they get it fast. And they also provide more nitrogen to the plant, more like a kind of an ectomycorrhizal type of symbiosis. Yeah, so it's, it's driven, it's microbially driven though, yeah. That's what's cool, yeah. <laughs> Maybe you mentioned it, what form is the, the C11 in? What chemical form? Uh, it's in a gas, it's, it's, in a, it's in a gas. And so the plants take the it CO2? in. CO2? CO2, yes, yes, yes. So the is that ammonia? Uh, I believe so, so I'm not, a, I'm not, yeah. Uh, I, I, I believe it's in the ammonium. I could get those details. Thank you very much. <laughs>